<laughs> That's not a bad idea. We have to come up with a clever name. All right, we're ready to get started. We're learning Masecha Sota Daf Lamed Hey, starting. That's not true. Masecha Sota Daf Lamed Dalid, starting at the very top line. And we are now in the midst of the discussion when Klal Yisrael was entering into Eretz Yisrael across the Yardin, which we began discussing last night. And today we're going to learn some more of the details. Top line, top word. We'll be learning until the very last line on Lamed Dalid and Mabitz. At the very moment that the Kohanim placed their feet into the Jordan River, the waters turned away. But they only turned away in one, in one direction. So like when they stepped in the water, so then all the water beyond them stopped, but there was still water coming from but toward them in one direction. So what happened with that water, we'll discuss. How do we know that they stopped the water? When they got into the into the Yardin. What happened with the water that was upstream behind them? Right? We're used to this from Az Yashir. Like we're talking about a wall of water. So that's what the Gemara says in Abraisa here, that there was a wall of water based on the Pasuk. The Kama Govan Shel Maim. Uh, so could you imagine, so when you would imagine the scene, the Kohanim step foot in a river. To the right, there is no longer any water flowing. To the left, the water makes an L shape and turns straight up. Okay, we're talking about a nice nigle, like not a normal thing to happen. So how tall was the water? So says the Gemara, the Kamagovan Shalmaim, Shnei Masar Mil Al Shnei Masar Mil. It was, a, it was an area of the size of the camp of the Jewish people, which was 12 mil by 12 mil. What? It was huge. Oh, that's massive. A mill is actually about a mile. Right. You're talking about gargantuan volumes of water. I mean, it probably doesn't compare to the splitting of the sea, but it still is a lot of water. Definitely but we'll see in a moment that this actually was the small, this was the conservative estimate. So it says the Gemara, He was of the opinion that the water, um, that the water would reflect the size of the Jewish people. It seems from the Tanakhama, Rav Yehuda, that the rate at which one would cross the river was the rate at which the water would flow. Because if the resulting wall was 12 mil by 12 mil, that implies that for every square mil of people that walked through, that's what it was. So he assumed that there was a ratio, seemingly some kind of mathematical equivalence to the speed at which they were walking and the volume at which the water would have flowed. But the other sheet doesn't like that. Amar lo Reb Lazar, Reb Shimon, I disagree with you. Litvarecha, Adam Kal or Maim Kalim? Which one moves faster? Have you Omer Maim Kalim? He says, no, water moves faster. What kind of what kind of format? Of Pashat, that's true. Have you ever walked by a river, even a slow moving river? Thousands of gallons of water will pass you in a minute. There's no question about it. And you're walking with children in tow. Twelve, uh, twelve shvatim, uh, the Aaron, the Kohanim, the Levim. It's a whole to do. This. Again, we've discussed this before, like the walking through the airport scene. It's not fast when you have little ones. So there's no way. He says, of course, Pete, of course the water flows faster. In Cain, if that were to be true, by Mayim Vishotvin Osan, if you're going to say that the only amounts of water that would have stood as a wall is 12 by 12, my gosh, there would have been so much water would have collapsed on the people and it would have killed them. That can't be. Ella, therefore, Rebbe Lazar Bereb Shimon changes what he says is the wall. It was piling on top of itself. Keep in al gabe keep in. Wave on top of wave. Yes, sir. Mishlosh meos mil. 300 mil high of water. Adshiro osan. Komalche mizrachumayra. Until all of the kings of the east and of the west. That means on the Jordan side of the river and on the Israel side of the river. Until everyone was able to see this water that was standing at the Yardin as the Jews crossed over. That a Kodesh Baruch was Hovish, he dried up the Jordan. They were standing on dry land because of the Jews. Ad Ovram, till they passed over. By Yomas Levavam, their hearts melted. They couldn't even stand to fight with the Jewish people anymore. They saw that a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Chvodu Asmo was creating Nisim for the Yidin to get into Eretz Yisrael. There's like some point you're like, okay, I got to stop now. Paro didn't have that. That was by Yichbad Leif Paro, that a Kodesh Baruch Hu heavy his heart. Ah, how can you remove, how could you remove Bechir HaChav? She says, I say them before, no. That gave him Bechir Shis. Because when you see a Nez Nigla, you can't. You can't do it. You're stuck now. But by Paro, he had Bechir Shis by a Kodesh Baruch Hu adding the Kveda slave. The only way you can actually make a choice when you see a nice nigla is if something's wrong and I have to add the Kvedu Salib. So here are the, the other kings. Uh, they couldn't anymore. They, they knew the Jews were in charge. 
How do you celebrate this? The same way as this? It's a great question. I don't know. I mean, it's not it's yes, it's Rayim. It's it's a nice in regards to the water, a masking. There are thousands of nisim that we don't celebrate. There are thousands of them. But and maybe on some of them we used to say halal. We know we've seen in places in Shas. There used to be a whole long list of halos that we used to say that we no longer say. Not so posh. That's the whole. I was talking to my kids about uh, halal and yom mood. My kids are like, so do we use it with a bracha or without a bracha? So I said we say it without a bracha. I said, but I want you to understand that it's been highly politicized. Mm-hmm. Halal and Yom Ha'atzma'ut is no longer a halachic discussion like it should be. The halachic discussion should be based on Gemaras and Rishonim. The Gemara and Rishonim, if you are in a makum nes, so you should say halal. <laughs> it's not a secret. It's, a, it's in Gemara, it's in Shas and Poskim. Do we apply it here? Do we not? That's the Shaila. It's a real halachic way, but we have politicized this ad ein sof. Ad ein sof. It's not even, now it's just a reflection of your hashkafa. If you do it, you're this. If you don't do it, you're that. Very, very unfortunate. We've lost the halachic lens to look at Yom Ha'atzmaut. All the jokes, uh, that means we've lost the halachic lens, and that's sometimes a big problem. It says the Gemara that not only is it the case that uh, that all the kings showed a pachat, but says the Gemara, Ve'af, Rachav, Hazona. Um, Ve'af, even Rachav was worse than the kings. Okay, that's what the Gemara seems to imply. Amra l'shluche Yoshua. She said to the messengers of Yoshua, "Ki shamanu es asherovish Hashem es meyamsuf." We heard that there was dried land. Then she too uh, was full of fear of uh, of heaven in regards to what had happened. Odom biarden. They're still standing there, feet on the ground in the Jordan River. We could imagine the scene. We've probably all been to the Jordan River at one point or another. Omar lahem Yoshua deu al matem over mesayardin. You need to know why it is that you're crossing the Jordan. Al menashe to rishu as Yoshua ha'aris mibnechem, so that you can inherit this from the people who currently inhabit the land. Shenemar v'ho rashtem is called Yoshua ha'aris mibnechem. You're taking over the land. Imatem osim kain. If you're going to do this, you're going to kick out the current inhabitants. Muta v'im lav, and if not, bain ma'im v'shot v'no sechem. Says the Gemara, then the water is going to come and uh, and drown all of you. The word of Sechem is a weird word. So the Gemara calls out and says, Yoshua, wait one second. What is the word of Sechem? My O Sechem. Says the Gemara, it's a conjunction of Osi Eschem. I don't believe that this is a word used in the modern language. It's Osanu. There's a very, I don't, again, I don't, there might be more here. I'm sure the Rishonim, maybe the Marsha, maybe other, others discuss this. I didn't look, but the word is a super weird word. Why would he use it? And why the, the odd ex, just say Osanum. So you just, why are you, why is he calling them you? It's us. It's it's us. Okay. Odom Biyardin, still while they're standing there, Yoshua has another speech. Amar len Yoshua, harimu lachem ish evan achas al shikh mo lemisbar shiv Israel. Everybody, not everybody really, but pick up some stones. We need a total of 12. This should be a sign for, for within you. Down the road, your children are going to ask, they're going to say, and you're going to tell them, that's our land. That is our land. And therefore, this is going to be a simon. Odom be Yardin, he has yet another comment. Well, how long were they in the Yardin for? He's still giving them another, it's a soliloquy. He says, Amar len Yoshua, su'u lachem mizeh, mitoch ha-yardin, mimatav rag le-akohanim, hachen shtei masrei avonim. You need to prepare 12 other stones, not the not the 12 we were talking about. Ve'avartem osam imachem, these you travel with. Ve'hinachtem osam b'malon asher talinu bo alayla. Ve'gomer. And these 12, the 12 we're going to have are going to be stationed by the Yardin as a, to memorialize what happened, that the Jewish people entered into the Yardin. But over here, we're saying something else. Another 12 stones that you're going to carry with you to the places that you're going to sleep. So it says the Gemara, Maybe it would be the case that we would assume that you have to carry the 12 stones with you everywhere you camp. Not just stop number one, but two, three, four, five, and six as well. Says the Gemara, no, Talmud Lomar, Sher Talinu Bohalayla, just that night. Not for anything else in the future, just that night. How heavy were the stones? So says the Gemara, Amarev, it should be Rabbi Yossi. Um, Rabbi Yossi says, Abba Chalafta, Rabbi Lazar ben Masya, Vechananya ben Chachanya, Amdu Allah They made an estimation about how much these stones weighed. Vishiarum kol achas, Vachas, Shikula ke arboim sa. It would be a rock that is the volume of our Sa. We know that our Sa is the minimum minimal shear of a mikvah. You can make all the drushes you want about uh, the kedusha of these rocks. That it's the mikvah of the Jews coming into Eretz Yisrael. A lot to be said. 
the Gmiri, and we have the following physics tradition. Check that. I wish my dad was here for this. He would love this. What does the Gemara say? The Gemiri of tradition. The Te'una, the Midli Inish, the Katve, Tilsa de Te'una Have. That which I can carry by myself is a third of what I can carry with you. So mm -hmm. if I was carrying a stone by myself, let's say I can carry 40, because seemingly one person could carry 40, right? It said everybody pick up a stone. But if I was carrying it with another person, then I'd be able to carry three times as much, which is 120 units of, of measure. Again, we don't know what the weight is because this is actually, Shkula Karbaim says a volume, right? That's how we look at that. It's length with height. It's ama al ama barum ama, whatever it was. Remember what it was? From Shalash Amos, yeah. So it's whatever it is. It's, 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 who says that? Oh, oh, you're saying that. You are climbing to a mikvah, and it's really, really... Ama al ama barum shalosh foot and a half. The right measurements. It's not the right the the the, the proportions, right? Yeah. Uh, a foot and a half by a foot and a half by four and a half feet. Wow, that is snug. It's, it's snug. Yeah. But, and by the way, if it's if it's a rock, <laughs> it's a very big rock. It's a very big rock. So he says that the, uh, we have a tradition, and I'd be curious to hear mathematically if this is sound that uh, what I can carry by myself is a third of what I can carry with help. And we can envision that a little bit. So it says the Gemara, Mikan le'eshkol. From here, we can probably make a cheshman in regards to the eshkol. What was the eshkol? It was the massive cluster of grapes that the Jewish people found when the Miraglim went into Eretz Yisrael. And now we're going to do a little bit of math. Shin Amar. The Pasuk says, Vayisa'uhu bamot shnehem says the Pasuk that it was carried, the cluster, the Eshkol, was carried by two people. Says the Gemara, that's a little bit of, a, of an extra phraseology. When you have a pole, <laughs> how many people have to hold the pole to make it a pole? Two. So says the Gemara, why does the Pasuk say Shnaim? Just say, Vayisa'uhu Bamot. They carried it with a pole. A Pashat that there's two people. So what do you mean that they're Moda Shnaim? Elamai, it must not be that there was one pole. It must be that there are two beautiful to you, by the way. What? What do the pictures have? I don't even know. Yeah. Is that like Little Medrash says? Where do you see it? I don't know why. Huh? You guys are more detail oriented than I am. I didn't even notice that. It used to be like on the signs for Israel, like the tourism thing. One pole or two? I think one. One pole with two people. That's not shot in the Pasuk anymore. It was probably never shot in the Pasuk. We're just Amaratsan. So the Gemara says, according to the Tanakama of this Brisa, it's two poles, four people. So what does that mean? That means that if one person is able to carry a third of their weight, and now we have four people, and one person can carry 40 sa'a, that means that four people at 120 a pop, that's 480 uh, sa'a worth of grapes. So this is not a push. That's, that's, that's a lot of grape. That's a lot. And then the Gemara says, just wait. That's only the Tanakama. Amar of Yitzchak, Tortini, the Tortini, the Tortini. It was one pair followed by another pair. It was two pairs. So you now had one, two, three, four poles holding this up. Four poles is eight people. Eight people times, now they're working together, 120 a pop. You're talking about 960 uh, units of measure in regards to saw that they were actually able to carry. What the weight is, is a, I don't know. You got to figure out the density, but you're talking about, again, the washing machine as rock, okay? Oh, it's, it's a thousand pounds of pop, 960 times a thousand, whatever it is, it's, it's an unfathomable amount of weight. They're grapes. <laughs> the ones we get in jewel are like, the, the, the whole thing's a joke. And obviously there was something going on in there too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, watermelon is probably an appropriate uh, comparison. It's probably an appropriate comparison. I, maybe it's hard to know because even then they'd have to be as dense as lead to reach the weights that the Gemara is hinting to. But okay, it says the Gemara Haketzad. It must be obviously Shmona Nasu Eshkol Echad Nasu Rimon. One person carried a Rimon. What does that say about the pomegranate? That it was forty sa. That's a beast, right? The Echad Nasa Teina. You got one person carrying a fig, or a cluster of figs, maybe. But the two good guys of the pack, they didn't carry anything. Why not? Because they were the upper echelon of this uh, not such wonderful group. 
No, they weren't part of this. This was a scheme that they were doing and they weren't part of the Eitzah. So they weren't involved. They had already been cut off from the group. All right, let's get back to our discussions about how much water there was when the Jews, when the Kohanim stepped into the yard. They have an argument within the argument that we had at the top of the page. We're on the bottom line. Of La Medal and Amaral, the Gemara says, Schad Amar the Divri of Yehuda, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, it was Kechanayasan Avru, that they crossed as they camped. So if they were 12 by 12, they literally, by the way, that also means that it also means that the nace of them crossing was 12 mil wide, because they, they were crossing as a square of two. What? No, it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Yeah, it's, it's not, yeah. It's not normal. And the Dibri Rebbe Lazar, Bereb Shimon, he says, No, it was narrow, single file line, all kids line up. Fine. Bechad Amar, no. That's not really the right way to understand the Machlokas, because really, Bein Mar, Uvein Mar, Kichana Yasan Avruf. Really, he says, everyone agrees they crossed in form, 12 mil by 12 mil. Mar Savar Adam Kal, according to one opinion, man moves faster than the flow of water. Not in our generation, that's for sure. Umar Sabar Mayim Kalim, some say no water flows faster, and that's really the machlokas that's going on here. Okay. Shlach Lecha Nashim, let's discuss the Shlichus. We know that a Kaddish Baruch was not thrilled about what was going on with the uh, with uh, with the Chaytam Iraglim. Amar Eish Lakish, Shlach Lecha, I don't want to do this. Midaitcha, if you're going to do this, you're doing it on your own. Vichy Adam, take out the words there. Vichy Adam, Borah, Chelek, Rala, Atma. A man only picks bad. A Kaddish Baruch is not going to be involved in the poor decisions of man. Man can make that, that, that decision. Vahainu Dixi, Vaita, Beinai, Hadavar. Moshe says, I'm in agreement. Amorish Lakish, Beinai, Velo, Bein of Shalmakom. A Kaddish Baruch was not a fan of what, what they needed more than the, than the miraculous master of the universe who's done miracle after miracle. And now they're going to send in Miraglim. They don't trust a Kaddish Baruch Hu's word. Very odd. Says the Gemara, Vayachbru lanu esa'aretz, yet Vayachbru in the context of the Pasuk means that they're going to do chafir, they're going to dig, they're going to investigate and see what's going on. Says the Gemara, that's not what it means. This is chafira from the language of embarrassment. Says the Gemara, Amr Ebchia Bar Abba, Miragam lo nizkavna ala leboshta shel Eretz Yisrael. These guys were not in it to win it. They were in it to make an embarrassment out of a Kodesh Baruch Hu's commitment to the land of Israel. Chafra and Bosha in the Pasuk are equivalent terms. And Bosha Cherpa, not really spelled the same way, but a similar meaning seemingly from the Gemara based on this Gzera Sakasu, based on this Gzera Shava, seemingly similar words, and this was all for Bosha. Does it talk about anywhere why they were so dead dead I'm sure it does, but not in the Gemara. I'm sure it does discuss it. Uh, we'll see a little bit of a remez to it right now because the Gemara says that quarter of the way down on Lamed Dalet and Bez, we actually have a little bit of an insight into who these people were based on their names. Amar of Yitzchak, Dover Zem Mesoros Biyadenu Miyabosenu, Miraglim al Shem Maasehem Nikru. The people who were the Miraglim, and they're all listed in Parsha Shlach, um, they're all listed right there in the beginning of Rishon, and uh, they were all labeled based on their names. But we only have the Mesorah of one of those 10 people. Kalev and Yehoshua, no problem. But the remaining people, they um, they actually, we, do, we don't know all of their names. We know their names, but we don't know what the what the Svara was behind their names. Let's give an example. Sasur ben Michael, this name was representative of his Maisim. Sasur, Shasasar, Maisim, Shalakodesh Baruch it's just so hard to imagine after experience. I really, I'm not. I, I, we the miracles we see are covered. We, there's a lot of miracles we we don't see them. It's so hard to imagine that uh, two weeks after Harsina there was a Makoshish eight sale. It's just so hard to imagine that. It, maybe it's not the case. I don't know. But Sasur ben Michael was Sasur Shasar Maiser Maiser Shela Kodesh Baruch Hu Michael. Why was his last name Michael? Shasa Atmo Mach. Really, Atmo made a Kodesh Baruch Hu Mach. He made him very small. Amr of Yochanan, no, no, we have another name as well that we actually know about. Says the Gemara, Afanu no, uh, Ne'emar Nachbi ben Vafsi. We actually know about his name as well. What is his name referencing? The Gemara says, Nachbi shehechbi dvarav shel HaKadosh Baruch He hid, he, he hid HaKadosh Baruch Hu's miracles. Vafsi shepisei almidosav shel HaKadosh Baruch He trampled all over the goodness that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did. The Pasuk says in regards to Kale, Vayalu, Venege, Vayavo, Ad Chevron, Vayalu is plural, they went up, Venege, and Vayavo in the singular, they went to Chevron. So says the Gemara, if you're going to be grammatically correct, stick with the plurals or stick with the singulars, but don't give me the mixture. 
says the Gemara, Vayavo mi boile. It should have been Vayalu banege Vayavo ad Hebron. So why is it only in the singular? So the Gemara says halfway down, almost halfway down, Amar Rava, the Lamech Shapirish Kalev me atzas meraglem. He saw what was going on. He said, I want nothing to do with you guys. So what do you do when you're stuck? You ask for help. He went to Hebron, he went to the Mara Samach Pela, and he prostrated himself at the Mara to ask for help from, from the Avos. Amar lehen Avosai, bikshu alai rachamim she'anatzel me'atzas meraglim. By the way, what does that show you about his mindset? He was afraid about being bought in to their, to their Kool-Aid. He didn't want that to happen. But sometimes even though we think we're strong enough, we still have to dive in for the for the strength to navigate a tough situation. So Kalev is like, please, forefathers, please help me. Yoshua, why why wasn't Yoshua there? Why only Kalev? We know that Yoshua was already uh, already better. How did that happen? It says, Yoshua, Kvar Bikesh Moshe, Lav Rachmi. Moshe already took care of him. How do we know? Shneemar, Ba'ikra Moshe, Lehoshe, Bin, Nun, Yehoshua. He added the Yud. It's not Hoshe anymore. It's Yehoshua. And says the Gemara, Ka, the additional Yud, the Yud, Hey, Yoshia, Chame, Atzas, Miraglam. That's beautiful. Now, whenever we hear his name, we'll know that Yoshua was gifted with the, the fortitude to no longer be concerned about absorbing the values of the Miraglim. The Hainu Dixiv, how in fact do we know that Kalev did go there? The Abde Kalev, Ekev Haisa Ruach Kerasimo, and the Pasuk uh, speaks about this a little bit further if you read the rest. He went into the land, Asher Basham of Izaro Yerishana. He went to that place of inheritance. The Pasuk speaks about the, the giants who, who were in Eretz Yisrael at that time. Visham Achimon She Shai the Gomer. Achimon. It, uh, what's what does the name mean? It says the Gemara, Me Yuman Shebeechad. He was the most talented of all of the brothers. He was an expert. He was uh, a big bucky. Sheshai Shemesim Es Haaretz Kishchasos. Every time he took a step, he would leave divots in the ground. He was a Gavra Rabba physically. He was a big person. He caused for some holes in the ground. Talmai Shemesim Es Haaretz Talamin Talamin. When he would walk, he would leave what appeared to be furrows in the ground. Maybe he dragged his feet, needed some physical therapy, don't know. But he was leaving furrows in the ground whenever he would walk. Davar Acher, another shot in the names. And I have no idea how these actually match up to the names. But the Gemara says, Achimon Bana Anas. He built the city of Anas. Sheshai Bana Alash. He built the city of Alash. Talmai Bana Tilbo. He built that city. What's Yelide Ha'anak? They were the children of the giant, a little bit uh, extraneous. Usually people who are four foot one don't have children who are seven foot one. So if you have these three guys who are however many meters tall they were, push it that their father was also of a similar height. So what's the extra word? Ha'anak says the Gemara. It's not what you think. They were so giant that it appeared that the sun was like a part of their necklace. You like look up, you'd see these huge guys. Yeah, again, it's hard to imagine. And they had like the sun was shining over. Like, oh yeah, that's just part of his necklace. Like they were they were so big. These guys were huge. Says the Gemara. Hebron was built in seven years. My nivnasa, what does that mean? Ilema nivnasa mamish that the Pasuk is speaking about building uh building Hebron first, and Hebron was in Canaan. That can't be. Efsar Adam Bone Bais Livno Katan, Kodam Livno Gado. How can you say that the house would be built for the younger son before the older son? After all, Dhsiv, Uvne Cham, and here I'll just read the full Pasuk for us because otherwise this won't make sense. Uvne Cham Kush Umitsraim Ufutu Khanaan. Look at the names of his sons. Cham, Kush, Umitzraim, Ufutu, Kanan. So Kanan is the last on the list. Hebron is in Kanan. So the Chorah, if you're saying that Hebron was built, Hebron is Kanan. Hebron's in Kanan. So therefore, it must be that Hebron was not built first. Ella, Shahisa, it must be a different reference. You're right. Mitzrayim must have been built out before Kanan. But Ella, Shahisa, Mivuna, uh, the ground in, in Hebron, in Kanan, was fertile. Al Echad, Mi Shiva, Bitzon. It was seven times better. Than, than so on, which was the best city in Mitzrayim. There was no such thing as a rocky terrain like there was in Hebron. If you've ever walked up to Mars, it's all rock. Forget about the paved roads. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the landscape of uh, of, of that space. It's very rocky. That's where they buried people. And it was more common, I guess, because remember, we bury differently. We bury in soft ground. They were burying in subterranean in mountains. Like, have you ever been to the to the base of Kvaros and Tzvas, you'll see that there's a lot of like, uh, 
uh, the underground burial plots. There's like mountain cutouts. Hannah's and her seven sons are there. So all those lot there. Okay, so they buried in rock. And ve'en lechamul b'chol ha'ratzos yeser me'eretz Mitzrayim. On the outside, outside of Eretz Yisrael, the next best land is Mitzrayim. Shenemar kigan Hashem ke'eretz Mitzrayim. The Pasuk has a reference to uh, Eretz Mitzrayim being kigan Hashem. Ve'en lechamul b'chol Eretz Mitzrayim. The best city there was Tzoan, and Hebron was better. How do we know that so on is the best? That's where the officers live. They don't pick the slacker city. They don't live in the slums. They pick the best city, the most fertile ground. Says the Gemara, wait one second. The Chevron to Roshim Have was Chevron really a very rocky terrain. Is that correct? After all, where was he going? And what do Kvasim eat? They graze. So you're saying it's a rocky terrain, but the, if you're getting the best kvasim, that means they've got some schmaltz on them. But how are they eating if it's a rocky terrain? Vitanya, and furthermore, we have another b'risa. Elim ayalim mi Moab. The best ayalim, the best rams are in Moab. Kvasim, the best kvasim are mechevron. So there has to be some kind of vegetation there. These are not carniv carnivorous animals. They're they're herbivores. They need grass. Says the Gemara, mi no. That is your proof, actually. Says, well, what does he mean it's our proof? Because I did the klisha ara of the raya, because the ground is so difficult to um, to uh, to take care of, and you can't like you know plow it and make it smooth. So then there is grass growing there, but there's nothing to no one's going to cut it. So therefore, there's grass growing there. Vishaman Kinyana. That's where you're going to buy the animals from because nobody touches the grass; they leave it there. And therefore, we see that even in Hebron, which is a rocky terrain, there was plenty, and it was seemingly uh, significant. There were copious amounts of grass and other vegetation for animals to eat. And the best kvasim came from Hebron. We'll stop right here and pick up more tomorrow with discussions on the Miraglim. Wishing you all a beautiful night.